In Matthew chapter 8, it describes the story of Jesus crossing the lake with his disciples and an enormous storm blows up. Now keep in mind that the disciples were experienced sailors. They had grown up on this lake, they had fished on it their entire life, they knew how to handle a boat in a storm. But this storm was different. The Bible says how the waves went over the boat. It was obviously being tossed by the wind and the waves they were taking on water and these experienced sailors feared for their lives. They were in full panic mode. Now what was Jesus doing during this chaotic time? He was asleep. Now I can't understand how Jesus could have been asleep because the boat's tossing, the wind is howling, it's taking on water. That means he was getting wet and he was surrounded by men who were screaming and who were fearing for their lives. How could he stay asleep? Well, I heard Bill Johnson, the pastor of the Bethel Church in Redding, California, explain this story. And he said the reason Jesus could stay asleep was because there was no storm in the realm that he lived in. Jesus had an internal peace that was independent of his circumstances because of his relationship with his father. And then when they woke him up, he released that internal peace into his external environment and the storm stopped. Now, as I learned, knew about that story throughout my lifetime, I always thought that this was just an amazing example of the power and authority of God to change external circumstances while he walked on the earth. But that actually was wrong. You see, Jesus did not come to earth to show how God walks with man. He came to demonstrate how man could walk with God. There's an enormous difference. You see, if you take the first perspective that he came to show how God walks with man, then you could just say, well, yes, all the miracles were because he's God. And once he went back to heaven, all the miracles stopped and it really has no further effect on us. But if you take the second perspective, that means that everything Jesus did, we can do too. In fact, in John 14 and 12, Jesus said that after I go back to heaven, you, can, you, his followers, will do greater things than he did. Now, are you in a storm right now? Are you facing overwhelming circumstances? You have a choice. You can choose to stay in the storm, be overwhelmed, panic, be swamped, and, and feel hopeless. Or you can realize that in Ephesians 2 and 6, it says that your spirit is seated with Christ in heaven and there's no storm there. And remember, when you became a Christian, the Holy Spirit became resident in your heart. So there's no storm there. That's your internal reality. You can have the same peace that Jesus had asleep in the boat. So what realm are you going to choose? Stay in the storm or use your internal peace seated with heaven and release that peace into your storm. You get to choose. But let Jesus calm your storm. Choose the higher reality. Go above the storm. Now I want to hear from you. What storms has Jesus helped you through? Just leave your testimony in the box below the video because we'd love to hear your testimony. It, it will encourage others who are in the storm right now. And if this is your first visit here, you need to get my free self-assessment guide. And to do that, just subscribe to my weekly email newsletter by filling out the form on this page. And I'll talk to you again next week. But this week, if you're in a storm, Go to your higher reality. Be like Jesus.